I'm Matthew Murray, Associate Editor at Computer Shopper, and today I'm going to show you how to build your very own home multimedia computer for under $1,000 using parts you can find online at Newegg.com. For more information about the components we used in the computer and how to construct them yourself, visit Computershopper.com slash DIY. So have a Phillips screwdriver handy and let's get started. Every computer build starts with a case. Ours is the Thermaltake Bot VX. It's a nice roomy mid-tower case with mostly toolless construction, which means we won't be a screwdriver for everything that we're doing today. But before we do anything with it, we need to open it up. We're going to use these two latches here on the side, just push them in and lift off the lid and set it aside. Now, inside are these cables, which lead from the top panel here. We will be using these later to give the computer USB and external SATA capability, as well as a headphone and microphone jack at the top. We don't need them now. So we're going to feed them through here and put them on the outside of the case. Do the same thing with this power connector for exhaust fan in the back. It'll be easier to install the motherboard if we put the power supply in first. It goes in right up here. Now we're going to install our Cooler Master Extreme Power 500 power supply. It's important to do this first because of the top panel cables here, which will get in the way and make this a little bit tricky. Once you have it in there, just line up the screw holes like this and secure it with the screws that came with the case. After you've installed the power supply, move the power cables out of the way just the way you did with the top panel cables. That will make installing the motherboard a lot easier. It's time to prepare the motherboard. We're going to begin by installing the Core 2 Duo processor that we'll be using our computer. And it's easier to do that outside of the case because you'll have a lot more room to work with. First, we're going to move this protective plate on the CPU socket. Do that by pushing down on the metal bar It's time to look at our processor. It's a 1.86 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo E6300, which offers a good amount of performance for not too much money. Inside the box, you will find the processor and the fan and heat sink assembly responsible for keeping it cool. Before we can do anything with the CPU, we need to remove this plastic plate from the back of it. It's very easy to just squeeze the sides and lift it off, but don't touch what's underneath or you could affect the way the CPU works. The arrow right there will show you where the arrow on the processor should be located. Match up the arrow and then gently put the processor into place. Close the metal restraining plate. Push down the lever and lock it under the flap. case back on the table now so that we can show you how to change the I.O. plate. That's very important because it has the correct layout ports for your motherboard and each motherboard is different. So you need to use the I.O. plate that came with your motherboard instead of the one that's on the case. Now this one is a bit unusual because it screws on and off. So we're just going to unscrew that one here and remove it and place in this new one. Hopefully with a minimum of blood. Inside the case, you'll find holes for things called standoffs that support your motherboard and keep it from touching the back of the case, which would be a very shocking experience. We know which ones to use in this case because they're labeled A, F, and M. A is the one we're using because our motherboard is an ATX motherboard. Simply screw it in by hand, 
like that. It's time to install the motherboard. The ports here will fit through the holes in the I.O. plate that we just installed. And these holes here are where the standoffs will go. We're going to put the motherboard inside the case now. And when you're doing that, put it in very carefully and aim the ports toward the I.O. plate in the back. The ports will just punch right through it very handily like that. And an additional ease of use factor in this case is a guide standoff that has a little knob on the top that lets you see exactly where it needs to go. Now it's time to secure the motherboard to the case with the motherboard screws that came in the case box.